Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this next video in the Bad Ab series, we're going to be tackling the Raven Guard successors, the Raptors, or the Raptor Legion, depends on when you got in the hobby. But this paint scheme, very much the Raptors. Yeah, it could be fun to visit the old one, actually. I might jot that one down. Uh, anyway, when the Mark VI kit came out recently for the new uh, edition of Heresy, I think, like many other people, my first thought was actually, these are going to be amazing for painting Bad Ab Marines with. For me, Mark VI is synonymous with so much to do with the Bad Ab Wars, so many of the colour plates we got, the time period it sits in, all the rest of it. What I particularly enjoy is the fact that I can mix and match the armour marks to look like the colour plates and just have a bit of fun. So I haven't done anything drastic with this guy, but I've added a Mark III arm, uh, a Mark IV arm, a Mark IV plate, a Mark II pad, just to take him a touch further away from Heresy and set him very firmly uh, in Whammer 40,000. And incidentally, I think this is the most fun I've had doing a tutorial for the channel so far. So I really hope you enjoy it. Let's paint. With such a subdued, sort of sneaky beaky scheme as you get with the Raptors, there's definitely a risk of it becoming too dark, too boring, uh, so that it actually doesn't look remotely interesting on the table. So that's something we need to be aware of. We can play around with contrast. It might be lower contrast than another project, but there still needs to be a little bit in there. Uh, and I've done a few different schemes in the past for Raptors and never really been happy with them. Um, but I have started off the same way. Uh, this is no pre-shade, so straight over a black undercoat, which is immediately going to dull those colours down a little bit. Uh, we're going to start off with Olive Drab Shadows. Uh, this is Amma by MIG. Um, probably, for me, the best airbrush-ready paints I've used. Um, I don't really buy into the whole airbrush paint necessarily. Um, you know, I think you're always going to have to thin 99% of the time. But uh, actually, straight out of the pot, these are pretty amazing, uh, all the ones I've dealt with. So I'm all over, just give that a base coat. Then our first highlight is a very small step up and this is Olive Drab Dark. Now both these colors are part of a modulation set uh, along with Olive Drab, highlight, uh, Olive Drab Base and Olive Drab Highlights. So they're designed to work well together and you can just build them up and it's great fun if you're into your military modeling. Um, you know, you can get a lovely effect. Uh, the, the hard work is done for you in a sense of, of picking the colors. With regards to placement of highlights, relatively simple. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be light from above, so therefore all the upward facing surfaces and higher up will be lighter. But I've also picked a light source, so I picked an angle I want to look at the miniature at, and then I've decided that the light is also going to be hitting him from the, uh, the right as we look at the model, uh, and the same on the back. Just gives a little bit more uh, interest to the shapes that we're able to render uh, with the lighting. Now, this is where we move away from the olive drab, um, because in the past I felt it was too olive drab, it wasn't green enough uh, to be raptors. And I've used a colour called Lauren Forest by Games Workshop. You can see how thin that paint is. Um, I don't know the exact ratio, it doesn't really matter. That's how thin it is when I'm spraying it on. Now I'm spraying at between 25 and 30 psi, and I'm using our Cult of Paint uh, Evolution by Harder and Steenbeck, so that's got a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle in it. So because I'm using that quite heavily diluted paint, I do need to be aware that if I spray in one area for too long, the paint's likely to spider off and we'll get that horrible effect. So always moving. I'm using the air from my airbrush to dry the model as I'm painting as well. So bit of paint, bit of air, bit of paint, bit of air. And just take my time to build it up. And I'm putting these highlights in in the same place I did the previous colour, just trying to tighten them up a little bit. And when I talk about that lighting it from the side so we're able to play around with our sort of rendering a little bit more, by that I mean we can really enhance the shapes that are on the model. Um, so we can paint this model as if it was a bit of 2D artwork almost. And I love these Mark VI so much. Like I painted a load for those White Scars project and I just, I can't wait to paint some more for me. I really can't. They're the, the perfect Marine. And just being able to fiddle around with a bit of kit bashing, it's very exciting. It's nice as well after, <laughs> goodness knows how many decades in the hobby to still be excited. Uh, by Marines. Uh, now I'm going to go back to our first highlight colour, so this was Olive Drab Dark. I'm just going to tidy up any of the areas where I've sprayed a bit too much of the Lauren Green on. So I want to bring back that nice circular highlight on the shoulder pad uh, and just tidy up the legs a little bit as well. This I have diluted, so probably two drops of thinner to paint. So previously the MIGs were undiluted, the Lauren Forest was, I don't know, three or four drops of thinner, something like that. 
Now, once we're happy with our color, I'm gonna prep the miniature for the next stage. And for this, I'm gonna use a gloss varnish. I'm using this in my airbrush again, still spraying 25, 30 PSI. Uh, I'm using Vallejo Polygloss. You use whatever you like, rattle can airbrush, doesn't matter. We just want a nice glossy surface uh, to prepare it for the next couple of stages. The first of which is pin washing or panel lining. Now for that, I'm gonna use a brown. In this case, it's Shadow Brown by Abtalung 502. You could use Burnt Umber, any sort of dark brown will look absolutely fine. Uh, and then I'm gonna thin that down with some mineral spirits. Now, most of the time, my preferred mineral spirits are Sandstore by Winsor & Newton. Mix this up into a wash, it's a little bit thin there. So I'll mix some more of the oil paint in till we get a slightly thicker consistency. There we go. Then we can just work our way around the model. I've done a video dedicated to pin washing as well, so I'll link that up in the top. Now, I just want to take a moment to say thank you ever so much to all of you that support us, not only here with your subscribes and your likes, but particularly over on Patreon. Um, it's growing every month. We're blown away by the support and it's just allowing us to produce more and more videos for you. So you get your one on YouTube and at least one on Patreon each week. Uh, and we're going to be trying to bring in more and more. We've got artists coming in to do sort of guest spots as well. Uh, it's really exciting. It's everything we wanted to be able to do, sort of share with the community. Um, and it's because of your support that we're able to keep doing it and expand and, and plan these exciting things for the future as well. So I really do appreciate it. So if you fancy checking that out, the link's down in the subscription. Subscription? Description. A bit of subliminal subscription there as well. I've also applied the decals at this stage as well. And whilst I was waiting for those to dry, I've just blacked out the other bits on the model. Once everything's dry and you're happy, we can give the armor its final finish. Now with these guys being all stealthy and all the rest of it, an ultra matte finish I think is perfect for them. So I'm using Ammo by MIG Ultra Matte Varnish. Be careful with the ultra matte varnishes. Give them one layer, let it dry, see how you like it because it's, it's pretty drastic. Now, if you're ever unsure of where to put decals and things like that, the amount of reference material we have nowadays is, is staggering. You know, you've got your codexes, you've got your source books like these Badab books. You've got great suggestions for where to put um, your symbols and all the rest of it. And these color plates have really influenced how I want to paint this model. So I go quite heavy on the weathering. Um, also didn't notice, but the eye lenses have been painted in quite a cool way on these. I've not seen before, so I'm going to give it a whirl. Um, wait to find out how that goes. Um, but yeah, if you're ever unsure, particularly for Marines, you've got tons of reference. Now we're going to start off with the battle damage. Um, obviously, if you don't like battle damage, just skip this stage, um, but I really like it. Now I've taken our highlight colour, so Lauren Forest, and I've just mixed in uh, a very, very light brown. I think it was tau xv88 or something like that just basically a very very light brown color just an off white's absolutely fine we just want to lighten the paint up um, but also thicken it up a little as well then applied it on a sponge touched off the excess and then very slowly obviously this is sped up footage now but very slowly just work your way around the model thinking about where on the model you know or, or rather where on the space marine is the damage going to occur so a lot of those edges um, particularly lower down the model but I think the idea with the Raptors is, you know, they go out on operations for a really long time um, and they get pretty beat up. And now I'm going to go in with my paintbrush and use the same mix of paint. And I'm going to add a few little scratches here and there, but also areas where I wasn't able to get to with the sponge. So, for instance, on the feet, you can get to the toes really easy, but the bottom edge, as it were, of the, uh, the shin pad, it's quite tricky to get to with the sponge. So I'm just going to go in and do little, little dots and scratches with the brush. This is probably the most time consuming step of the whole model. For me, it's one of my, if not my favorite part of painting at the moment, uh, has been for, for years. Um, so I really enjoy it. Um, and I personally still think the way we're painting this model is very much at an army painting achievable uh, level. Um, you know, it's, it's Marines as well. So you're not gonna be painting thousands. Obviously apply as, as much or as little as you like. What I would say, is if you apply a lot of battle damage in the middle of a panel, then the edges need to be proportionate to that. Um, so if there's tons in the middle, there's probably gonna be even more on the edges. So I like to start at the edges and then do a little bit towards the center of the panels. I just want it to make sense across the model. It doesn't have to be super realistic, but I need it to make sense. Now, once you're happy with that, 
and I mean I love how this looks um, I said at the start this is my favorite tutorial I've done um, now we're going to go in and add a little bit more so now we're going to represent some slightly corroded damage that's occurred so where liquid or, or moisture or whatever's got in and has started reacting with the paint on the armor you know the composites it's made of all the rest of it and for this uh, the paint I'm using here is dark rust by Vallejo Pans Races but any dark red brown will work just fine the little bit of red in it helps on the green uh, with that little bit of contrast like I said we don't need it to be a high contrast model but we can bring in little elements of contrast and in this case there's a bit of color contrast as well um, so Rhinox Hide by Games Workshop would be great for this as well. And I'm paying attention to areas like the decals, um, making sure we scratch up the edges of those a bit, just helps blend them into the paint job a bit more. But generally I'm only going to be putting these darker scratches on areas where I've already got quite a heavy build up of the lighter scratches. But there's no real trick to this, just get the consistency right on your wet palette get comfortable um, and just work around the model. Personally, I like to work all the way around the model doing a little bit and then go back around again if I want it to be heavier damage rather than work on one panel to a finish. And that way, if I've done too much on that panel, I, I'm kind of stuck. I kind of need to even that out across the model, like beating dents out of the car, you know what the old uh, sketch is like with that. But I'm really happy with this level of damage on the model now. You can see that brown pin wash has not only given us some definition, but it's also introduced a bit of dirt and grime to the model as well. But it's that chipping that really brings the model to life. And obviously there's no edge highlighting on this model, but we're still getting definition. You're still able to appreciate the shapes that are on there. Now for the silver parts of the model, I'm going to use a scale 75 black metal. This is a lovely smooth, dark silver. And actually I, wasn't aware the trim was silver uh, on these guys till I checked back uh, on the color plate. You could argue it's gray, but for me, it, I'm interpreting it as being sort of like a, a brushed metal. So that's how I'm painting it. And then to highlight it, because I want to keep it nice and dull, rather than using a brighter silver, I've mixed a light gray into my scale 75 black metal. Um, I honestly can't remember what light gray this was, but it was just a light gray. Um, so it's still got a little bit of that metallic sheen to it, but it's nowhere near as glittery as if we were to use like a, a lead belcher or mithril silver or something like that. It's quite simple for doing these highlights. You can sort of see where the light reflects off. Just a little bit here and there on the edges. Now, if we look at the color plate, there's quite a lot of rust uh, on the models. And I wanted to bring that into this, but I didn't want to do lots of heavy rust, as it were, on the model. I wanted to just give it that sort of sheen, almost. Uh, sheen might be the wrong word. But basically, what I'm going to do is filter the model now. So I'm using uh, an oil wash. This is Light Rust by Absalom 502. I've thinned it down into a very, very loose wash. Um, so thinner than the mixture we used for panel lining. And as you can see, I put a little bit on the model touch my brush off on some tissue paper to dry it off and then I just move it across the panels. So what we want to do here is very slightly stain the surface and this is something that you'll, you'll hear or see referred to as filtering. So we're changing the colour underneath ever so slightly. It's particularly effective uh, when we go over things like the white decals as well. This is something I've enjoyed doing for 10-ish years since I've been back in. It was something I learned on the second model I painted when I got back in from reading, uh, I think it was MIG actually, MIG Jimenez, um, in one of the, the military modeling magazines. Now I have done two coats of that that you saw, so I let the first coat dry and then I did a second one. And now I'm going in with a dark brown. Uh, this is Bitume by Absalom 502, but it's just a dark brown. Um, again, Burnt Umber would be fine. Uh, if you want to make it darker, mix a bit of black in. Uh, and I'm just going to go over all the metal parts with this mixture. And not only is this going to do a bit of dirt and grime, definition, uh, but it'll also just kill all that shine from the metals as well. And I'm going over the black bits too. I'd like to add a few little streaks, sort of dirt and grime, onto the model at this stage as well. 
So once those previous washes have dried off, I'm going to take some of that darker brown oil paint with a nice fine tip on my brush. I'm just going to put a little dot of neat oil in a few areas where there's sort of heavier damage or where I think it will look cool, uh, like on the shoulder pad. And then I shall just sort out getting that in focus. Trying some different ways of filming at the moment, so please bear with me. Okay, and that oil can sit there for a you know, few minutes before you have to start worrying about reactivating it. And then with a clean brush, just pressing and pulling down to create that streak. And if we need to tidy it up, again, clean our brush off and we can go back in. And just a few of these across the model have a nice bit of impact. As I mentioned earlier, the eye lenses were different to how I'd ever seen them before in this artwork. So I thought I'd give it a go. Now, I warn you, there's some pretty uh, shaky footage uh, for the next minute or two. So if you get motion sick or anything, I'm um, sorry. Um, and this is the first time I've tried this. So rather than try it and perfect it and all the rest of it, like I probably should have done, um, I've just given it a go and I've left the footage in because you know sometimes it's useful, right, to see. Um, but essentially what we had was this uh, yellow eye lens with a sort of yellow line along the bottom and then a highlight, a bit of yellow highlight in the middle of the lens. So initially I'm trying to put in this yellow line across the whole bottom edge of the lens. Now to begin with, I've used an orange, I've used Chimera orange and I've used Chimera warm yellow here. They've just got very good coverage. So use whatever paints you have that you know have decent coverage. Um, certainly an orange contrast paint would have worked well for that first line because I almost was making it a wash consistency so it would just sort of wick into that recess. Um, you could use oil paints to do this as well actually if you wanted uh, and in hindsight that might have been easier. But now I'm just going in and painting the yellow in more towards the center. What I'm worrying about here is making sure I don't bring the paint down onto the green armor. If I get too much of it into the the black lens as it were that doesn't matter I can clean that up really really easily um, it's harder for me to clean it up uh, on the green so you can see here now I want to tighten that line up and this is something you can use when you're doing scratches when you're doing lenses in the traditional way get the black and then as I compress the brush onto the model I naturally just tighten that line up and we can make it a lot sharper there without having to draw it sharp in the first place so far not bad and now we just need to go in and do this sort of central yellow highlight so I go in with the warm yellow I don't bother with the orange this time and actually I've really enjoyed the result of this and I think it's something I'll persevere with um, as I say get a little bit better at it um, and maybe use it on a on a project because yeah, it's just nice to see lenses done differently. Andy did lenses differently on his Contempt of Dreadnought a while back, and it looked it was just really fun to see something done um, different to how we're used to. And I actually think it's it's quite effective. So again, you know, use that artwork, use those colour plates. There's, there's so much good inspiration on there for that. Now, for the base, um, I stuck him on the base from one of the Praetors, actually, just because I thought it'd be fun, a bit different. Um, I've just got some greys. Uh, I've got an orange here, just painting in the details very, very simply. Um, this is quite a lot like how I did the basing for the White Scars army. And then I quite liked how that orange looked mixed with a grey, so splodged a bit more of that on there. And then what we need to do is blend in the the terrain, as it were, that we've stuck on, so the, the eagle and the rubble in this case. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use a product called Industrial Thick Mud by Vallejo. And you can just use water uh, to thin this down with. Essentially, it's a, it's a texture paint. It's a paste. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with them. I'm just going to tap it and move it around and just doing lots and lots of taps just so we don't end up getting sort of brush strokes in there 
and just shove this up against the plastic and stuff and just just helps blend it in a little bit again if this was for my army i'd take a little bit more time i'd use some different grades of sand as well like i did with the, the white scars and stuff but actually this is you know this is still a very uh, nice result for very very little work and now we're going to use some pigments so i'm using a burnt umber pigment I'm using a natural sienna pigment uh, and I'm using a light gray and just sprinkling them over the base and then use my brush to push them into the surface now pigments look really cool um, but they are not the most resilient uh, of things to work with uh, particularly for gaming armies you're going to find this does come off you can seal it in a bit you can use pigment sealer or white spirit or mineral you know mineral spirits or isopropyl alcohol all of those things work as a fixer but it's it's not a hundred percent and if you do handle your models a lot it is going to come off um so you will need to reapply it and just need to be aware of that doesn't mean you shouldn't use it but it's um yeah i think it's worth it for the result i think the result looks really really cool and i don't game a huge amount um so yeah but there he is um as I say, I'm I'm really happy with how this model's come out. It wasn't the tutorial that I had planned for this week, um, so it's very nice um, to have you know to to have done something that's ended up being something I really enjoyed. Um, I say Badab is is probably my favourite thing uh, or conflict within 40k. Um, yeah, so it's been nice working through the series. So let me know as well what you fancy me tackling next uh, as a chapter from the uh, the Badab Wars because there's there's plenty to go, but it's always nice to know what's uh, what people are hankering after. This has been a tiny bit longer than most of my sort of army painting videos. But as I say, hopefully what you've seen is the techniques are all very simple. They're all very forgiving. You can take them to a higher level if you want. You can spend a lot more time and be a lot more careful than I have um, and get a, a lovely result. But actually, as you can see with this, even applied a bit slapdash, I think the end result is fantastic. And again, across an army, I think this would look superb. Um, so Liam, get on it. Um, I know you've always had a soft spot for these. Time for a third version of the Raptors. Uh, and if anybody else does have a go, um, please tag us in them or, or mention us in the comments. I'd love to see how this scheme works out across a larger army. So if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already and hit that little bell to notify you when our next videos are coming up. Thanks ever so much for your support. I'll see you next time.